Um, yeah. Listen, thank you so much. This genuinely is is a bit of a dream come true, to be honest. I I launched this podcast back in, in 2016 to start a conversation about film and music and how beautiful and important that relationship is. And... And I never in a million years thought that I would get the chance to talk to to one of you, to both of you, to any of you about City of God, to be honest, because it was a film for me that kind of really just unlocked a, a particular area of film for me that I never had the opportunity to experience growing up. I came from a very small fishing village in Scotland. Our access to film was very limited. Um, and so when I moved to London and I started, you know, kind of discovering and having the opportunity to see more film, City of God was one of those films that kind of was just a, a huge landmark for me in terms of right. a, a story and a type of filmmaking that I was just completely blown away by. So this is wonderful to get to celebrate your work, your creativity and your fantastic film. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your interest. I, I guess it. I guess it'd be kind of nice to start by by asking you both how it feels to kind of almost revisit this project and be and have the opportunity to talk about it again after 21 years has passed what does it feel like to have that opportunity to yeah. to take you back to talk about what that film meant to you Fernando, yeah, well, do you want to start? Course, yeah yeah of course for me it's a very important film because it launched my career but i, I never watch it again I mean, last time I watched it was like, yeah, I think wow. 18 years ago. Wow. I remember I was in Venice and, and uh, there was another screening. And I had seen it so many times. So I left in the middle of the, the screening and I've never watched it again because it was really. But now I, I want to watch it again. Um, um, I want to remaster the sound yeah. and, and do a new. I mean, I'm, I'm doing like a, a director's cut to be released oh, wow. in here. Yeah. So so now I'm going to watch it again, but uh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> so it's good that Ed is here because he remembers more than me. <laughs> Ed, what about yeah, you? But, but it's almost, almost the same thing with me. I never watched it again. I did play it to my sons, but I never stayed on the room. Like I, I, I kind of watched this and then I <laughs> kind of left. Yeah, but... but yeah. I do remember things a very a lot of a great experience of doing this film because it's mm. it was like it, it, one of the things I don't know if any Fernando knows that because he he did that for me with me again after that but this time was like oh can you come here watch something and then you go inside the room was like a apartment room where Danny, the, 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 the editor was, then he just like play. And he, you know, it, it was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> this is great stuff. So it was like a, a, a scary thing at first because what, whoa, we have to do that. And we cannot like let it, from here, it has to go up, not down. And he's yeah. already so high level. So so it was very, very, very scary in the beginning. But afterwards, working with Fernando is always very pleas you know, pleasant because he, he knows how to put people's talent together without mm -hmm. like... Be, he knows how to get the best of people uh, without being like someone that is like, oh, no, I want this way, this way. He just like conducts you to go where he wants. So so uh, in the end was a very nice one process, very like low stress, lots of fun process. Yeah, you know, I, I don't remember what I used the stamp music for the first cut. I yeah, really, it was that. I really don't. I mean, your music so, I mean, in the yeah. film... I, Danny, I, Danny, I Danny, what was used? Danny was a DJ, and uh, <laughs> by the time you remember, the, I don't know, he was a proper DJ. Yeah, and then he was a DJ, and then he he had a lot of stuff like stem music, so and it was high level stuff. Mm -hmm. He he went to black music from the sixties and seventies and everything. 
And then we had to turn that into Brazilian music and keep the level up. So so that was the 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 the, the I mean the the mission to be it's accomplished. Got, it's got so many the music is is kind of an immediate part of 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 the story and and the setting and it's it's got so many different roles the music you know it's kind of it's the sound of the streets it's the sound of what's coming out of you know different kind of buildings and things then it's also got those different time frames of when we go you know it to different to, to different kind of time zones of where we are in the story and then the different points of view you know the point of view of the chicken or whatever that is you know all those kind of different moments it's it's so there there's so much music that it's just it feels like a real character in the film as well and fernando i wanted to ask if you were if you kind of really knew um you know when you were when you were making it and and kind of how much was was there, was there music in the screenplay as well in terms of did you know how much you needed or music was going to be in there you know i, I wanted a lot of music and to be a uh it's a it's a dark story in, in some ways but uh i wanted to to make it because when you walk yeah I mean, i'm very uplifted and, and this kind of thing because when you walk in a slam slam in, in brazil in favelas there's always music playing you know mm. it's it's a very poor environment and you know that but there's all there's some it's gay at the same time this is very pop you you listen to rhythms all the time so i wanted that feeling you know and and the film the structure of the film it has three very distinct parts I shot in different ways. It has different colors uh, with different lenses. In the beginning, it's more wide lenses. In the end, it goes to long lenses. It's really like three different grammars for the film. So in some way, I think I asked Eddie and, and Antonio, the other composer, to mimic this idea, to have three really different styles for each part of the film. Mm. And maybe Ed can tell us how he achieved that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, 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 this this is very interesting because at the same time that we have like three different moments, we have two lines. One line is the like what can I call it like adventure line like uh, line, which is the the fun line, which is the movement line, and then the, there is this dark line. Mm. And, and those were two different sets of music. So the first one comes from the DJs and the black music and everything. Yeah. And then the second one comes from, from Indian flutes. I played, I think I have it here. Wait, wait. <laughs> love it, amazing. We're, get, we're getting a live rendition, Fernando. This, this is amazing. One. This thing... <laughs> Oh, this wow. thing, this thing made all the dark path on City of God. Look, it has feathers and everything. This is indigenous. Where, where is this? Where does this comes from? Some Indian. I don't <laughs> really? know which one. Do you know how to play it? I want to listen yeah, to it. But, but it, this thing here is uh -huh. made with. with uh, it's not honey, but it's the the walks that honey does, and then with the time it got like dried and stopped playing. Oh, I just, okay. yeah, and and then I have another one here which it does almost the same, but uh, it it is it's very it's very wow. dark stuff. It's like a, and then I kept playing lots of channels of this. I was playing like 20 times during the scenes and has my breathing on it and has this And then this thing comes from a, 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 a more um, enlightened, uh, a more like bright point of view in the beginning when the guy goes on the tree and then he sees the drop and then he decides to leave the crime. And that, but this same thing goes during the whole film and it gets darker and darker and darker and darker to the, the rape scene and then to the death of yeah. every, in the end. 
and and he's always this 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 float. I mean, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, again, on the parallel has all the the grooves, the groove music. Yeah. That has the the horns, and then and then, and he does start more like acoustic from the seventies and sixties, end of the sixties and seventies, and then ends up with some electronic going on to make the the the, the timeline changing and the music so, helps so... the music helps with that journey as well like for that for that moment where you kind of you know where the um where we go to to the beach with walk it and that kind of almost like real funk kind of vibe that kind of comes through that kind of almost goes oh okay it's like almost a kind of uh, almost like a, a a time kind of capsule that takes you musically to a certain kind of feeling, a lighter feeling, a kind of, you know, but also a kind of, you know, oh, it's this kind of era type thing as well. It's so clever, so subtly, but it's amazing how music can do that. Yeah, me and Antonio, we decided right from the, the beginning uh, to have samba. I remember Antonio saying clearly, like, samba, samba, samba. Antonio is a very energetic guy and he was like samba we have to have samba samba was, yeah yeah we, we agree on that okay but we have to have samba we agree on that let's let's get but the samba has to be the some and like okay okay and then and then we we, we antonio is uh is uh is he played drums guitar and bass and i wrote and and played all the horns not not all the horn, but saxophone, and then all the saxophones and trumpet and trombone was two friends of mine. It was like us three doing all the horns, and then it was a lot of fun because it's a very nice kind of music to play. Yeah, and to compose over. So so that that was the fun part. Yeah, and then that that came out really fast, and then comes to the next the this next layer which is like what's gonna be this dark thing and then it was samba there but we distorted the, the the beat we came with the beat like one octave down so it was like the samba beat very slow and then with this and then everything came together to 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 make sure like we got dive into the darkness of those those places and then when we had to come out it just groove it was yeah. was very nice Fernando I guess one of the the biggest things I think sometimes as well is knowing where not to have music as well and you know in terms of navigating the positioning of music in in this film Talk to me a little bit about, you know, what were the choices and where you felt music was important and where it wasn't. And and if that was a kind of a, 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 an obvious thing in terms of when you were working on that collaboration. Yeah, of course, I think I think we gave to to Eddie and Antonio already the, the, the moments that we went to silence. And yeah. sometimes you put a lot of music in, in a part of the film just to have the silence uh, reinforced that comes after. And of course, we, we use silence to reinforce drama or, or, I mean, you know, creates a mood. But when it comes after some, I mean, loud music, it's even better to just cut and, and what's missing and, and it creates a different state of mind. And yeah, I think, I think yeah, we use silence like in, in any any orchestral music or, or silence. We know it's very, very musical, can be very musical, right? By the way, we, we never used any orchestra, right, Eddie? I think we, no. we agreed. I, I mean, the first thing, I, I, I remember that. First thing we said, that this is, should be a sound Brazilian. So it's for, forbidden to have violins or any any orchestral instruments. Let's do it uh, proper Brazilian. And, and we did it, right? There's no violins yeah. at all, no, no cellos, no nothing. Right? And, and no. Uh, that's what no. makes it, yeah, this distinct from... I mean, what we yeah. used to listen, Absolutely. right? I think that's what what immerses you in 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 the environment immediately. You know, in terms of you feel like you've been kind of dropped into that environment because it feels like 
the natural sounds of what would be there. And I wanted to ask about when you were actually filming because, you know, filming on location in those situations, the sounds are there, you know, the kind of music's there coming out across the, the favelas and things like that as it's kind of going on. And that must have, I don't know, was that the case? And did that was that inspiring in terms of kind of, I don't know, kind of tonally or the, rhythmically in terms of how you shot and what you shot as well? No, as I mentioned, I mean, there's the, the in these places you, you listen to music all the time, but the music we used was very different because this is was a period film. We shot it in 2000, and, yeah. and the story is set in, in the 70s. So from the beginning, we knew that we would have to create something, well, of course, based on, on, the, on the 70s and 60s, but mm. uh, it wouldn't be what I was listening while shooting. Yeah. But... but um, I am um, one thing that, that kind of blew my mind again whilst revisiting the film was just was the cast and was the performances from, you know, everybody who's in a frame, basically, you know, it's kind of not, not just those kind of main characters, but but even those characters like that are that are kind of running out of the scene or they're in the back. The casting on this film is is absolutely extraordinary. And it's so it, it's, it, you know, it, it's got that kind of documentary feel in terms of you feel like you're there, like I said as well. Do you mind talking just a little bit about the kind of that kind of casting process and finding those those young actors and 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 getting them to perform in the way and getting those performances the, the way that you did? Yeah, well, before starting to to prep prep production or anything, I knew my biggest challenge would be cast. Because in Brazil, even if I wanted, there wasn't this amount of, of young black actors at all. I mean, you could count like two, three, and and, and maybe not, not the best ones. Mm. So I knew from the beginning that to shoot this film, I would have to to create actors, you know. And so we set up in, in, in Rio, like eight months before, actually nine months before shooting, a kind of school for actors. And mm -hmm. I invited, uh, I went to, to different communities, favelas in Rio, and we invited people who was interested in, in, in on, on a workshop on acting. I never mentioned we was going to make a film after the, the workshop. It was just free workshop. They, they would get the tickets, the bus ticket, and, and a sandwich and, and, and a Coke. That, that was all. And we had a lot of people interested I selected 200 boys, so we would do uh, three three groups every day for four months. So I would spend like eight hours or nine hours a day with different groups from eight in the morning till three in the afternoon and uh, selecting the boys. And, and in this process, I never told them the film, as I said, but I would ask them to improvise scenes. We had a, our, our coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Gutu, Gucci Fraga, it's a very known, uh, he has a, a theatrical group in a favela, great guy. And so every day in the end of the exercises, would ask, we would ask them to, to improvise scenes. Say, well, let's suppose you're a policeman, you're a drug dealer. And, the, and of course, they were improvising the scenes of the film. They never, and, uh, and so they would do it and they'll say, okay, try this, try this line and and and. So they start uh, uh, rehearsing the film without knowing that there was <laughs> part of the film. And and by watching this, I selected the boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then when we shot the film, they, they knew the scenes more or less. And, and they never got the script. They were allowed to improvise and, and to change positions. So they were almost playing themselves. That's why it's so authentic. Because, yeah, I never... Even shooting, when we're shooting, they, they didn't know that uh, there was a script. So I never showed them any script. So I said, today we're going to do that scene that you come here and you ask him. And and and, and, and that's how we would, yeah, rehearse and, and, and then shoot. Wow. And if you watch the film carefully, you see that there's no continuity at all. Okay? I, I would never give them marks to hit, you know. Or just let them play like a theater play, like a performance. Mm -hmm. And our cameraman, our DP, Cesar Shaloni, he, he prepared the light. There was no stands in the, in the, on the set. Yeah. In the set. 
and he would just grab as a documentary the, the, the thing really happening. And, and that's how we shot. And that's why it looks still so authentic. I mean that scene, the scene where where there's the, where the two kids and he asks about you know whether they want shot in the hand or the foot and the reaction from that tiny little boy, who looks about kind of four or five years old, he might be older or something, but just the kind of, you know, and, and that and that's a great scene in terms of when you talk about your cameraman being kind of, you know, we sort of we see we kind of pull back to see the kids trying to escape, and then we're right in that kind of pen when that's happening and the kind of the the intensity of that and the, the sort of power that you feel kind of watching that and the kind of you almost hold your breath for that entire scene sort of thing but the performances of those little people was just extraordinary extraordinary yeah well we rehearsed that scene but on the day he was better than <laughs> during the <laughs> wow yeah i mean yeah, it, was, it, was very, it was very hot and, and i should lunch and I didn't so everybody was hungry he was hungry and it was too hot and he really got scared I mean he, was, he mixed up he was just a little kid and he really I, I was very concerned I wanted to cut yeah. it was so good so I, I let him do it but he's <laughs> very he... proud of course it was hard but he's very proud see yeah till today of what he did he should be we're, yeah he... yeah we're shooting in Brazil a, a series called City of God I'm not directing but uh all the characters that, that was alive in the film are, are in this series. And this boy, we, we brought him back. So, and he's very, yeah, he's very oh, happy wow. to perform again. And then, yeah. And in the oh, TV man. series, he has, a, he's, he has a, a limp, how do you call it? Yeah, a limp, walk. yeah. A yeah. limp, yeah, because of his feet. His feet, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You you mentioned the chat that you're doing a, you're doing a director's cut of, of the film. Um, what, I mean, you know, not to kind of obviously give any spoilers with that sort of thing, but how how have you approached that? How have you, yeah, what's the kind of journey for you to making the decisions about what's different from that original cut? Yeah, so far, what I did, I, I just, because uh, uh, the, the process we, 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 we worked for, with the images was very, I mean, uh, we, we improvised, we created a way to, to, to transfer from film to uh, from video to film, this was the first time a film was used this process in Brazil. So the quality, the image, the quality of the image is very bad. So I just last month I just scanned the whole all the material, and now I'm gonna cut the film again. the 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 quality is really really improved, and uh, and the, and there were some scenes and sequences that I cut in the beginning. So now that the film was so well received, uh, I'm gonna bring it back. So it's gonna be a yeah, and re-release it in a better, much much better quality. And I guess for sound as well, Eddie, I think we, we could remix and and well, we'll see. And does that mean to, yeah, does that mean you know. get to add more music as well, Ed? Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna change something. That's the opportunity, Ed. Yeah, it would be fun. I'm Maybe. open. I'm open. <laughs> Fernando, Fernando used to have a, a a a thing, and and I don't know if he works this way still. I'm gonna tell something here if if you, if you get mad with me, but we, we got we can this. cut it. Don't worry. But almost, <laughs> almost the film was almost ready, and then we got the Miramax fax. You remember that? It Which was one? like yeah. by the time it was a fax machine. And then uh -huh. got really long facts of changes of notes. Notes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you got a big one, and I got a huge one. And then I called Fernanda and say like, "Well, until now we were doing like the film together, like let's do it. But now there's this this fax. What should I do?" He said like, "Split, split it in three. Split it in three. The part you love, don't do it." Don't 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 change the part. You accept the change, but you would like not to change. We will discuss and then take the the third part. That that is the part you don't really care about and change as a day ask. And then I did just that. So 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 uh, uh, in the end we got like everything you, we wanted to to stay on the film. Even though we attended all the notes, like what was like a, his strategy, 
Yeah, no, I didn't address notes as well. Well, the film wasn't theirs. It was my film. Yeah. Exactly. Film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's you got to fight for, for your, for your, yeah, your, it's like you say, it's your vision. You had a connection with that story. What was it about yeah. Powell's book that you, you think you connected with? Do you remember when you read the book for the first time or, or how was the book presented to you? For me? Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I read the book, I mean, uh, it was a story set in Brazil and I didn't know, I mean, that that was Brazil. It wasn't a Brazil that I knew and nobody knew. Middle, middle class in Brazil didn't know that. So I wanted to to understand to 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 show Brazilians part this part of Brazil. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, the, the life in communities and favelas are much more known, and I think the film in some way helped. But uh, yeah, when I shot, it was really a mystery what happened inside the, the favelas, the slum. So, yeah, and um, I mean, the film the film opened up so much for so many people as well. You know, in terms of the 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 industry as well in in Brazil in terms of people feeling like they could tell stories. Yeah, after after the seed of God, uh, it came what what was called in Brazil the the favela movies. There was a several, I mean, like ten or twelve films came right after with the same environment, same kind of characters. So it became really like a, a wave of films that revealed this world for for Brazil, which was good. Yeah. So this um, is something that helped us, the country. I, I, mean. I am. I really hope that with your director's cut, we can have the opportunity to have a live music playback. And Ed, you can get the band together and you can play the score Great. live. Good, good idea. We're gonna yeah. take note of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great idea. We can have a samba night. We can have the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, samba. <laughs> that samba, would be samba. samba. Yeah. That would be so amazing. Um, listen, I know you've got to go, Fernando. So I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just say thank you genuinely for the opportunity to, to talk to you about about this film. Um, that that holds a really special place for me personally, and I know a lot of people as well. And it's wonderful that people are going to get the chance to see it in the cinema again. It's really exciting. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank yeah, you. Ed, Fernando, thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.